Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We are thrilled to have you here. Um, I know that uh, tonight is not necessarily the town hall that we had initially planned to have with you, um, but we are um, so incredibly proud of our team uh, for putting together an unbelievable program uh, for Berman at Home 2.0, which is going to be the focus for tonight. I wanted to give a major yashikoch to our upper school principal, Ms. Malka Popper, our dean of students, Ms. Dita Cooper, and the entire upper school team who has been working hard at what you're going to see presented uh, with you tonight. Uh, please know that as we continue to send you updates, uh, we also continue just a quick update for you tonight. We are still working um, through the JCRC as well as the Association of Independent Schools of Greater Washington to work together with our county and state officials uh, to continue to understand the metrics um, in our community um, and to continue to work towards an eventual return to our beloved campus. Until then, um, I'm thrilled to um, turn it over to Malka Popper, who's going to present you with Berman Home 2.0. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much for that introduction. You know, back in March, when we started hosting these town halls over Zoom, it was actually somewhat comforting to be able to come together as a community and spend a few minutes talking about the challenges that we were facing, the plans that we had in place, and just to be together, um, even, even from a distance, but so much, but still so close together. And so I'm looking just at the screen. I have two screens here, my the screen up there that I'm sorry, when you see me looking up, it's, it's the pictures of everybody. Um, and the screen down below is the presentation, but I'm looking and I'm seeing the faces of students and the faces of colleagues the faces of parents and the faces of, of many, many new families to our upper school this year. And I'm, I'm so excited to be here tonight to share with you a little bit about what we have in plan, what we have planned. Um, and it's comforting, honestly, to be, to be here with all of you. So thank you for joining me tonight. I'd like to start off just with a short idea from this week's Parsha, Parsha Re'e. One of the big themes in this week's Parsha, one of the thing, themes that's discussed quite at length is the idea of the holidays and the three major holidays, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. And in the context of Sukkot, we hear, we, we, it, it records the famous phrase, Vahayita Ach Sameach, that when it comes to the holiday of Sukkot, and we know that it's extended actually to all of the holidays, it says Vahayita, and you will be Ach, which I'm not gonna translate right now, Sameach, and you will be happy, joyful. It will be a wonderful time. And the idea of Simcha, and if anybody was on the middle school call last night, um, Melanie spoke about it so beautifully as well, and I want to present a, di a different idea than what she said, but this idea of joy and what it means to be joyful. And I want to focus not on the word joy, on the word simcha, and not on the word vahayita and you will be, but that middle word, that middle word ach. And what we know about the middle word ach is that it usually is qualifying the, whatever it's coming or limiting whatever it's coming to discuss. And so I've been trying to think about in what way are we trying to qualify, to clarify, to limit this idea of joy that we're expected to experience on all of the holidays and in particular in the holiday of Sukkot. And I read a beautiful explanation um, in the name of Rabbi Yehuda Yisrael Karfunkel and the Hamzat Yisrael. And what he explains is that emotional experiences are, that we are supposed to be having on the holidays are one characterized by joy. But if you just enter into the holiday and assume that you will experience that true joy that we're aiming for, you will never be able to get there. And that when we think about the type of lasting, uh, the lasting feelings that we want to have, and we think about things that we don't want just to be momentary elation, a moment of ecstasy, but rather something that endures once the experience might be over, it actually takes tremendous preparation. And so the qualification that I think the Torah is offering in saying v'hayita ach sameach is saying that if you want to actually be b'simcha, be in a state of happiness, be in that experience of true joy, you actually need to prepare very carefully. You need to make changes to your life. You need to make changes to your situation so that when you get to that state, it's actually something that will stay with you long after the experience is over. I think it's particularly interesting that, it, that this idea of preparing for something that should last once the experience is over is associated with a holiday that is known for being temporary. On Sukkot, we leave our physical homes and we go into a temporary hut outside and we are one with the elements around us. 
And yet we're expected to use that time to really reflect on what we are hoping for, what we want to accomplish, and how we can take the values and the ideas and where, whether when we return back to our home, take the idea of simcha and carry it with us. And so tonight, I'd like to take these two ideas and build upon them as we talk about the upcoming school year. The idea of preparation and of careful, careful, meticulous preparation that, we're, that is thorough, thoughtful, and in order to be able to fully engage in the experience. And the second is one that will hopefully take us from our temporary situation of Berman at home when we return back to the Berman campus, to our Berman, not Babait, but the other Bayit of Berman, the home of Berman um, in, in, in Rockville. And we'll be able to carry these ideas with us and we'll be able to not just have a momentary um, snapshot in time, but something that, that endures long beyond that. And so with that, I'd like, to, I'd like to start tonight by introducing you to our upper school team. Uh, Rebecca Kassan, thank you for opening up tonight. He's our head of school. I'm Alka Popper, I'm the upper school principal. And my, and my co-pilot, the best dean of students, um, I, I think out there is Ms. Dita Cooper. And you'll hear from her a little bit later in the presentation um, when we talk about student support and student activities. But what I'd like to start with tonight is just giving you an overview of what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about virtual learning, including technology, including assessments. What will virtual learning look like? We're going to talk about student support and student activities. I'll give you an update on college and Israel guidance, and we'll talk about communication, connection, and partnership. What does it mean to be working together? How will we be communicating with you? And how can you communicate and support us in return? Earlier this summer, we talked, we, we shared with you a little bit about our academic day. And as you all know, probably um, in the upper school and as well in the middle school, but I'll be focusing tonight just on the upper school, we're shifting from a traditional nine period schedule into a block. And the block will be 70 minute periods that will meet every other day with the exception of what we call the electives, um, which meet for a short amount of time, Monday through Thursday. And what you have in front of you on the screen is the daily schedule and days will either be A days or B days. A days will meet on Mondays and Wednesdays and every other Fridays. B days will meet Tuesdays and Thursdays and every other Friday. And you can see the schedule and I can show you um, the, that in next to block one, it says the letter A. And I'll talk to you more about why that's going to be important. Don't worry about writing it down. We're going to send this whole presentation out to you. But when, you, when, when students are looking at their schedule in PLUS portals, which is how they access their classes, um, and if you don't know what that is, wait like two slides and I'm going to explain it to you. It will say that you have Chumash during A period or biology during A period. They don't call it block one on day A, they call it A, B, C, D. So this will, you'll take the classes that you're assigned and you'll plug it in here. But more importantly than just seeing the actual, these are the minutes these are of, of each period, I want to talk for a second about the importance of the block. The reason that we decided to go to a block now was both logistically and educationally uh, motivated. There were a lot of logistics that went into it. We wanted a schedule that would work both when we were virtual and when we were in the building. We wanted a schedule that had fewer transitions so that especially when we're in the building and we have to shut you, every time people move from one place to another, there's a lot of cleaning that goes into, we have to make sure that the hallways are, 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 are staggered so that there aren't too many people. The fewer transitions, it will be much easier logistically. But that alone is not the reason that we actually chose to go to a block schedule. We chose to go to a block schedule because we believe that it is educationally sound. Having a longer period of time allows for a depth of conversation and analysis that sometimes is difficult to achieve in shorter periods of time. And so by having more time to analyze text, to do different types of activities, you're not just limited to a question answer format. You can think about how you want to take the learning and apply it in the very same class. It allows students to conference with teachers. It allows for um, reflection moments. And there's, there, and we begin and we transition in multiple activities. It's not where a teacher just sits and talks at you for 70 minutes. By the way, that didn't happen in the 40 minute, 40 minute class either, but it definitely doesn't happen in 70 minutes because nobody wants to listen to anybody talk for 70 minutes. But what happens in a block schedule is there's three or four or five different activities, each one with a different purpose and each one with a different goal 
whole in order to reinforce the learning. And so having the longer time allows for the learning to really seep in and for the students to be able to apply it and own it in the same class time. And so it wasn't purely logistically motivated. We believe that it's educationally sound as well. And so, uh, and therefore that, that will be our schedule and it will be our schedule whether we are in a virtual context or we're in the building. The difference will be, do you have, will it be live in a classroom or is it going to be on the computer over Zoom with, different, um, with, with that technology? In order to prepare for that, I want everybody to sort of look around your screen, your screen and take stock at all the, all the talented, talented educators that I get to work with every single day. And we think about sometimes that teachers get summers off. And let me tell you, that possibly is true. It's not usually true, but it's definitely not true now. Our teachers have basically shown up to work every single day. They've taken courses, they've taken webinars, they've taken workshops. We had, um, we have six or seven teachers that went through AP training. We had, um, we had, we've had ex developed expertise around the Google suite. We've invested in pro in, in apps like Edpuzzle and Pear Deck. All our entire faculty by department has participated in better lesson training um, where our Judaic studies team was able to have an expert in Judaic studies and teaching Judaic studies to teach to work with them on how to how to make the the lessons both in a virtual context and when we're back in person but specifically within a block meaningful and impactful we our science and math department met together our humanities and language departments met and they're able they've they formed these close bonds with each other with facilitators to be able to continue the learning and we we've been meeting as a faculty thank you to to melanie eisen who's been who's been helping facilitate weekly we just had one this afternoon um weekly weekly workshops for our faculty to come together to to learn about um lesson planning for the block to talk with each other to think about apps to try things try new things to to think about we had a whole a whole workshop earlier this week on building relationships with our students virtually and how we can do that and how we can get to know each and every person and that's what our teachers have been doing so i'm going to actually stop talking to the parents for a second and turn to all the teachers here and say thank you thank you for spending your summer with me even though you didn't really have to um, and i'm truly grateful and i'm excited for a great year together and with that, I want to share with you a little bit more about not necessarily this bigger picture, what the structure of the day is and um, the preparation that we've done for the block schedule, but going, getting a little bit more focused and, and narrowing the conversation. In the upper school, we use two main platforms to communicate around an individual student um, in terms of the work that they have, the grades, their attendance. And the first is Google Classroom. Every single class in, in the upper school has their own Google Classroom page. Students are invited. They might even start receiving invitations before the school year begins, but definitely on that first day when they get their syllabi, they, they, you know, there's a QR code or there's a link for, for students to be able to join the Google Classroom. And you as parents have the opportunity to sign up as their guardian as well. And what will happen in Google Classroom is that where, that's where the teachers post all of the assignments, the homework, upcoming tests and quizzes, so that um, it, it all lives there. It's a place where you can see if assignments have been submitted. It's a place where we can say, here's, here's what was supposed to happen, did it happen, and here's what's coming up. And let's make sure that we're planning for that. It's a way for our ESS team to be able to check in with students and get a snapshot in time of what's happening. That's part A. Part B is plus portals. And um, Plus Portals is our, our online gradebook. It's where, we, it's where our attendance is logged. And if you are new to the upper school, tomorrow morning you will receive an invitation from Amy Fanning, our amazing upper school administrative assistant, that will have uh, the instructions to be able to log into Plus Portals. For you as a parent and for our students out there for you as a student as well if you are returning to the upper school and you're not sure what your um what your if you need if you need instructions or a new password the spanning can get that too as well so don't worry about it but what happens in plus portal is that where, that's where you'll be able to see your schedule so all of all of you that have been asking your schedule it's all there they're all built um you can go and you can access them you could see what classes you have now you'll know that a means day a block one and B means day A block two um, and you'll be you can you can match it up that way or we'll send out a nice little template for you also to keep it organized um, and 
and it's also where where grades are and so that's and and it and the attendance as well and so you as parents will be able to have a, a parent plus portal and the students will have a student plus portal um, and that's where that's where that information lives and just it, as an asterisk to this conversation if you look in there and you want to have a conversation about the classes about your schedule um, feel free to reach out um, we're gonna we have we're gonna try our best we have about a week until the week and a half until the teachers come back but we want to make sure to be there to be there with you we've already been having a lot of these conversations but if you have any questions reach out we want to talk about it a minute ago i talked a little bit about google classroom as a place where things are posted it's where your homework assignments will be posted it's where it's where tests and quizzes live we also have grade level test calendars so that all ninth grade tests quizzes major assignments get posted in the same place so that the teachers know what's on deck for a given student and we can make sure that we're trying to achieve that balance but new this year, we actually um, updated our assessment and homework policy, and I'm skipping, I'm combining point two and three on your screen together, that tomorrow when we send out the recording from this and we send out your plus portal information, we're also going to send out our virtual learning handbook, um, which is a handbook that's, you know, a, a scaled down version of our handbook, but specifically for, for Berman at Home 2.0. And it will include the details of, of all these policies and you'll be able to have wonderful Shabbat reading. Um, and I look forward to hearing all the great feedback you'll have about it. Um, but one of the things that it will include is our assessment and homework policies and expectations. And what you'll see in there is that there's there's basically three tiers that are going on. There's uh, the general expectation, which is that a student shouldn't have more than three um, tests in a give tests or major assignments due in a given week. That they you know homework will be will be posted to your Google Classroom page by 5 p.m. Things will be posted to the test calendar at least once once a week or what one week prior to the, to the test being given. Um, and it will also let you know that you should expect, right, approximately 30 minutes of homework, um, you know, for, for a class. Um, you have due by the next class. Um, if you're in the honors class, you have a little bit, you have a little bit more, you should expect um, because you're at the honors level that you might have a little bit more homework. And if you're at the AP level, we're actually going to let our teachers assign a second night of homework because you need not only the, the to learn and master the content in the AP, but you need to be able to have a different type of practice. You'll also be the AP classes might need to assign um, additional tests and all those details will be there. But you should expect that when you when you get it tomorrow what you'll see is a policy that takes into account the reality of a block schedule that tries to create clarity and consistency so that you know as a student that by 5 p.m you're going to know what all of your homework is that night and you'll be able to plan your night accordingly there's in the idea behind this was so that the the teachers would be able um to have the to be able to communicate with each other the students would have the clarity and the consistency so that they can develop their own practices and so that our support team would be able to support our students in 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 planning for for all of their work and all of their assignments and in addition to in addition to assessments and homework you'll see all the other policies you know i'm sure someone in the q a tonight is going to ask about dress code we have a virtual learning dress code in there also it's a little bit different than our in-person dress code but it's still appropriate for our berman community um, so that's in there athletics so um, one of the we are thrilled to, to welcome Coach Singer to our team. He, um, he is our new athletic director this year. And we, one of the things that we were talking about was we know that we're gonna be um, beginning the year virtually and in, potentially in a hybrid situation. We don't know how long that's going to last. We don't know how long we'll be in the building or if we may need to go back virtual temporarily. And so we had, we had a number of conversations about how to structure our PE program, especially since, since the idea of, of having fitness as part of our lifestyle and as part of what we do um, and, and, and practicing healthy habits is really important for our school. And it's not just because it's a state requirement. And so what we're going to be rolling out for this year, and don't worry, it's in the same virtual handbook that I, that I just mentioned, is an independent study PE program, which means that students will be able to log 
the workouts that they're doing, whether they're running on a treadmill or going for a walk or doing CrossFit, or if you're going to a gym, or if you're playing tennis with your sister, and you'll be able to log that, that physical activity and it will count towards your PE credit for this year. And so for this year, we're rolling out this independent study PE model. We will be going over this in detail with our students during their orientation. Um, but I wanted to share with you that that's new this year um, to accommodate our current situation. I also wanted to let you know that the PPAC sports are are on hold right now. So unfortunately, we're not able to have um, the fall sports. We're hoping, um, we've been told that they're going to be reassessing um, and that they are going to try to get as many seasons in as they possibly can, even if they're shorter seasons. But unfortunately, we don't have all the information um, available to us right now. But the great news is, is that Coach Singer is working on, on having after school sports clinics um, in person. And so we'll be sending out a school wide communication with some more information um, in the coming days around that. Um, but it's an opportunity for students to be able to, in a socially distinct in person way, to be able to participate in some of these sports clinics. And even though most of what I've been speaking about is the September, which is going to be virtual, we are really constantly planning for our, our safe return to campus. And I wanna take one slide, so just about a minute to share with you what we're planning. Um, hopefully when, we, when we're able to safely get back into the building, we will be welcoming two grades at a time. Um, on orange weeks, we'll be doing ninth and 11th grade, and on blue weeks, 10th and 12th grade will be on campus. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the academic schedule will stay the same. Tefillah will begin at 8.15. The day will end at 4.30. Um, and if you are uh, if you have chosen to remain virtual, even once we return to the building, we have equipped every single upper school classroom with technology to allow the student to have an immersive experience. We have these owls that look sort of like an owl with that have 360 degree radius so that they're able to see um, everything that's going on in the classroom. We have large screen TVs in the back so that the teachers will be able to see the students instead of these little tiny boxes on the laptop, be able to see them and call on them. They'll be able to see their hands. We We've been talking with our teachers about how to do chavruta learning and how to use breakout rooms and how to whether we prefer using a FaceTime phone for that. Um, but the idea is that even if a student, once we return to the building, opts to be virtual, we want to make sure that that student is as integrated as possible into the learning experience. And we are very hopeful that that day will come very soon. The last thing I'm gonna talk about before I hand over the, the presentation to Ms. Cooper is our partnership. That especially when we're virtual, um, parent partnership is always important, but especially when we're virtual, it looks a little bit different. And I wanna talk about a couple of different things that I'm, I'm hoping we can partner on. The first is the idea of Makom Kavua. Makom Kavua having a dedicated place for specific activities is something that is not, is not just practical, but it helps from a psychological perspective when you know you go into that space and you have a certain mindset, you shift from one mindset to another mindset simply by entering your designated space for an activity. We have this idea when it comes to tefillah that you sit in the same place every day so that when you enter that space, you adjust from whatever was going on right before then into the moment of tefillah and you get ready for that. And so I'd like to ask parents that you work with your students to, de to define and create their makom kavua. Where will they be learning together? Where will they be every single day so that they can have the mindset, the, the mindset that I'm not in my bed, right? Please, it, it's not appropriate for the students to be learning from their bed, right? That's for sleeping. We don't want our students to be in sleepy mindset when it comes to learning. We want them to be in active mindset. So where is a good place that for them to be doing that? Check your technology, check your Wi-Fi. Um, and I wanna talk for very briefly about the laptop Chromebook conversation. Earlier this summer, we sent out a recommendation to get laptops for the upper school. And I wanna clarify, if you already have a Chromebook that's working, don't go buy another laptop because I made the recommendation. The recommendation is for somebody that is thinking about what device should I purchase? And we found that laptops were more successful in a virtual learning context than Chromebooks. And therefore we made that recommendation. If you already have a device that's working, you don't need to buy another one. But if you're thinking about it, we have a slight preference for laptops over Chromebooks. Finally, parents, we're asking that you help us with attendance. Right? Normally, if a student is not in class, we go out in the hallway and we're like, hey, let's go. The bell has rung. 
we can't do that in your home. Um, and so if, if you see that, that you're, everybody needs a break, and so that's not what I'm talking about, but if you see that it's time for tefillah and it's time for class time, help your student, help your student get there and remind them that, it, that, it, that, that's, that, that, that it's the time for learning and the time for student activities and the time for programming. And finally, we wanna hear from you. Don't be a stranger. We're going to be reaching out, but, but feel free to reach out to us if there's something that you want to talk about, because that's an important part of our partnership for us to be able to hear from you. I'm going to hand over the mic now to Ms. Cooper to talk for a minute about student support and student activities. Thank you so much, Mrs. Popper, and good evening to everybody. It's really, it's such a pleasure to see so many faces here, to see your names, um, and to feel that we're in community again, even if it's virtually. Um, I have the privilege of really working with a team of educators whose primary concern over the course of this summer has been the care, consideration, and love of your children. And there have been so many hours spent thinking through what can we do to support your children academically, to support them emotionally, to support them on their journeys into Berman and out of Berman, and to recreate that sense of community, that sense of joy and optimism um, that they always share through our student activities program. So I'm gonna talk about a little bit about what each of these individuals are doing, but also some exciting programmatic things coming up the pike um, for our virtual learning and hopefully God willing our in-person learning very soon. So if you look at the slide with me, um, just introducing once again, maybe some of you have met her already in person, but we're delighted to welcome Ms. Ariel Kramer as our new ESS coordinator this year. She's going to be um, working closely both with students and families and also our ESS faculty, um, both in the construction and oversight of our resource classes um, through the, all of the resource check-ins that will be happening this year and working closely with families on clarity of communication um, to our faculty and to all of the other sources that we work with to support ESS. Um, on our team also, we have Mr. Janelle Hector, our guidance counselor, who you can expect will be reaching out to all of your students at the beginning of the school year to do a check-in with them to see how they're doing um, and who will be available both during official office hours at several times throughout the week, but also in a capacity where students can still reach out to him to set up Zoom meetings, to set up phone calls. And what I'm really excited also to share is that Mr. Hector will be taking on an additional leadership role in our advisory program this year, um, which I'll talk about when we get to the next slide. And finally, Ms. Hoffman, Ms. Alana Hoffman, our college guidance counselor, who has been constantly updating us on all of the shifts and standards of standardized tests of college application processes and has really been trying to approach the challenge of the college guidance process this year and all the unique changes that have taken place. And we're grateful to all of them very much. I also, I can flip to the next slide, have the pleasure of working with these two fine individuals, Mrs. Miriam Zaghi and Rabbi Moshe Grossberg, who make up our student activities team. And I can't think of two people who care so much about the communal aspect of our school of trying to recreate what makes Berman Berman in an authentic, meaningful, and fun way. And I'm really looking forward to seeing all the things that we can do creatively to build that over the course of this year. We will, of course, um, be having some of the student activities that we've all come to know and love, hopefully, um, hopefully in person um, in whatever capacities we can. Um, looking forward certainly to orientation, um, but all the other things that are annual. Um, but I want to talk for a second about our weekly program structure as well. Um, we learned a couple of important lessons in the spring and about the effectiveness of engagement and student engagement. And one of the things that we learned was um, our students are thirsty to be with each other, to, to spend time with each other, um, but we need to try and do that in the context of the school day, um, especially when we're in a virtual environment. So what we've created for this year is a weekly student activities program that will take place during our prolonged lunch block, lunch block in the new lunch block schedule. Um, and that will consist of club time, time where clubs can still be meeting, still be connecting with their faculty advisors, still producing amazing things. We already have Hamodia, our newspaper, hard at work over the summer. Um, it's been a highlight of my summer working with our editors, and we're really excited about all of the clubs taking form this year. We're going to be hosting town halls every other week, 
where students have the opportunity to meet with Pisces Popper and myself to discuss important topics. Uh, we have our advisory program, which is going to be meeting every other week as well. Um, that's an increase to the once a month that was going on last year. And I'll take a moment to talk about advisory. Um, advisory this year is going to be almost exclusively focusing on the topic of mental health. And this is both in response to what we have heard back from, from students and families about the types of social emotional work they'd like to be doing in school, um, but also just in response to what I think is really a pressing reality for our teenagers across the globe today. And that's teaching, um, teaching students how to be effective communicators, how to understand um, their own emotions, how to articulate them in a group and how to seek support. And that's going to be run um, using the teen mental health curriculum. Mr. Hector is going to be playing, as I said, a much bigger role in that, um, supporting students and faculty as a mental health educator as well. We'll be having office hours built into our student activity schedule where students will be able to seek out academic support from their teachers to discuss homework, to discuss assessments, discuss classwork, and all the other things that may come up in their classes. Every other week, we will also be having grade level programming um, where our grade student councils who already have been pitching us creative ideas um, will be running programs with Ms. Zagi and Rabbi Grossberg um, to facilitate grade bonding and excitement. And finally, on the off weeks, when they don't have those grade level programs, we'll also be having a Friday Tish um, to maintain our sense of ruach, our sense of excitement, um, and make Berman still feel like home, no matter where we are. So I'm going to hand it over to Mrs. Popper to step on to college and Israel guidance. Thank you so much. Um, we've introduced a number of these people to you already, but I want to I want to share with you, and I'm going to give you um, in their names actually uh, a, a quick college and Israel guidance update um, for for to to support our girls, our 12th grade girls in Israel guidance. Mrs. Miriam Zagi and Mrs. Alana Weinberg will be will be helping our girls with their with their gap year programming, and Rabbi Brosberg will be continuing to work with with the boys. And as we mentioned earlier, Ms. Alana Hoffman will be will be supporting all of our students um, in college guidance. And I want to give you a few quick updates because we are in a unique, unique year. Um, and I'm going to start with Israel guidance. Um, the Israel programs right now are really focusing on getting their year started with students and figuring out how to get them to Israel and what that's going to look like and do they need to quarantine and can they quarantine. Um, and so they have they've, they've communicated to us that they will communicate with us. But what we do know is that instead of having um, on-site visits where they send their reps and we have all of these meetings, they're, as I'm sure we could have all guessed, the, the visits will be virtual and the interviews will be virtual as well. Um, I want to encourage you, parents and you students, to schedule your meetings with Mrs. Zaghi, with Mrs. Weinberg, with Rabbi Grossberg, so that they can get to know sort of what you're thinking in terms of, of your gap year program, if, if that's the direction you're going in, um, and how they can support you and help you think through all of the options available. As more information becomes available to them and to us and to our school, we will share that out with you. But right now, it's a more info to follow situation. College guidance. Um, I, I, I'm going to start by, by letting you know that Ms. Hoffman has a Google Classroom page for our seniors to get the up-to-date information. And there's so much information coming out on a constant basis. Um, Ms. Hoffman is, is constantly getting, getting that information, um, filtering it down, um, and, um, and sharing it with us. And I wanted to let you know that in addition to yesterday's UMD example, that they're, yesterday their announcement that they're going to the Common App, um, we've been getting a lot of information about um, with, for, for testing and what does it mean that colleges are going test optional and is it a trick? And I want to share with you a few of the highlights. And then I want to encourage you to speak with the real expert, which is Mrs. Hoffman. Okay, um, the updates are that as a school, we are hopefully going to be giving out, giving the PSAT to our 10th graders and 11th graders in October. Um, we cannot say 100% that that will happen, but we are planning on it. We've ordered the test materials and we are hoping to be able to offer the PSATs to all of our students. Um, from, from SAT and ACT, most of the test sites for Sunday testing for the August and September dates have, have closed. Um, there are a couple of sites that are open. Most of our students have shared with us that they've already found those places and have registered. If you're still looking for more information about those tests, um, please reach out to Ms. Hoffman and she will give it to you. And all that is to say, what's the purpose of taking the test or should we be taking the test or should we be taking the test again now that all these schools have gone test optional so i'm actually going to speak for a second to the junior families i've heard from a number of families of juniors 
asking, well, if this year the, the schools are test optional, then should we assume that next year they will continue to be test optional? And therefore, should we have our juniors get te do test prep and take the plan for the ACT and the SAT? And the answer is we don't know. We don't know. They have, the schools have not announced, most of the schools, I say, have not announced that they will continue to be test optional beyond this year. Um, and uh, therefore, we, I want to, we will continue, we anticipate that they will let us know, and we hope that they will let us know soon. We are in constant contact with our reps, um, and as soon as we have any information about the coming years, we will share that out to you. Um, so if you're, if you're thinking about what to do in the fall, the answer is we don't, we don't know. Um, it's likely that they might continue to be test optional, but we don't know for sure. Um, and um, what happens now that schools are test optional? What does that mean? And this is actually for everybody because there's always schools that are test optional. So how, how do colleges and what have colleges and universities shared with us about the metrics that they use in reviewing application and how should you, the parents and you, the students, be preparing for, your, for the college process? And the, the best advice is that we've been giving is mostly the same things that you've been doing. Find the teachers that can write you stellar recommendations. Think about what you're doing beyond school to cultivate your interest and passion and make yourself interesting to other people. Prepare, you know, make sure that your transcripts look as best as they can. Make sure that you are thinking about your essay long before you have to write it. And that essay now has become even more important than it always has because it tells, some, it tells them something about you. And, and don't write about your experience in coronavirus unless it's truly exceptional because everybody um, has gone through it. And that's, that's most of the advice that we've been given. Um, if you're a senior, check that Google Classroom page. If you're, uh, if you're um, a, a parent, if you're a student um, and you have questions about college guidance, even if you're a ninth grader um, and you want to be able to start thinking about what that looks like, Ms. Hoffman can have conversations with you um, about that. Um, seniors, you should be meeting with Ms. Hoffman within the first month of school, if not already now. Um, juniors, your main meetings start around January time and we'll also be having college guidance nights as well. The last slide for tonight, and then we're going to open it up for questions, is what to look for next. So tomorrow you're going to look for an invitation to plus portals for new parents and students. You're also going to get a summary email of things that we discussed, our virtual handbook, the recording to this. I'll give you a copy of the PowerPoint, um, hopefully without someone's random doodles on it. On Monday, August 31st, um, it is our textbook and materials pick up from 1 to 4 p.m. And that is going to be a time where you will be able to come as the, all of the divisions will be able to pick up their supplies then. So if you have a middle school or an upper school, you can make one, one stop. We'll be at the auditorium doors. They'll be at other doors, but you can go around. Um, and we're going to give you all of your textbooks um, to take home so that you'll be, you'll be ready. Um, on the first Tuesday, September 1st, is our upper school orientation. It will be by grade level and it will be virtual. Um, and we are hoping to have some in-person, socially distant programming happening, um, happening separate, but our actual orientation day where we're talking about the opening of the year, some policies, some, some things that everyone needs to know, getting to know each other, icebreakers, that will be virtual. Um, and our first academic day in the upper school will be an A day, and it will be on Wednesday, September 2nd. Um, and, and, and all of that information it will be on the calendar. Two quick reminders, our school supply list is on the Berman website. It's a new and improved, beautiful, beautiful website. If you haven't checked it out, it's just a work of art, so you should go. Um, you'll need to log in as a current family. Um, and also, if you haven't started your summer homework, better late than never, they say, um, make sure you get that done before the first day of school. And with that, I am gonna stop sharing my screen so that I can see you a little bit better. Um, I'm excited to, to work with your students, to welcome you all back, both virtually and hopefully in person. Um, and I'd love to answer any questions that you have to the best of my ability. I do know that one has come in, so I'm gonna stop sharing the screen right now. Give me a second. And okay, everybody can see me, hear me, we're good to go. Um, the first question that, that I just want to talk about for a second is we have, I, I let everybody know that on our orange weeks, ninth grade and 11th grade will be in person and on our blue weeks, 10th grade and 12th grade will be in person and I'd like to share um, a moment about that. Um, 
there, there are a couple of reasons that we did that. Most of our siblings um, are in ninth and 11th grade and are 10th or 12th grade. There are exceptions. I'm looking at you, Coplins, and you finds. I know you have 11th grade and 12th grade. I know that there are some exceptions, but the most sibling pairings are in ninth and 11th or 10th and 12th. So there was a, a, logistical, a logistical piece behind that, but there's also another piece that the current medical guidelines that we've been given is that while we are allowed to have a grade level pod, we cannot mix grade levels. And our Judaic Cities program is combined 9th and 10th and 11th and 12th. And so we, we chose to have one of those grade levels in person. And instead of having the other grade level sit in another room, they'll be, they'll be and joining from another room in the building. Um, they, will be, they will be joining our class um, via, via the OWL. So um, it, it made sense from, from a logistical perspective, mostly because of our Judaic Studies program, but not completely because of that. But that was, a, that was another big piece of it, um, it um, to be able to have 9th and 11th and then 10th and 12th on alternating weeks. Okay, um, Sarah has been monitoring the question, so go ahead. Thank you. First of all, I want to apologize for the annotation. My perfect Zoom meeting streak is over, so it's very sad for me. I don't know what happened. Um, but there's a question that came in about ninth grade orientation, as well as other new students. How will they be welcomed and acclimated into the upper school family? Ms. Cooper, do you want to talk a little bit about what we have planned for the ninth grade? Absolutely. So um, I've been working closely with Mrs. Zaghi and Rabbi Grossberg on our plan for ninth grade. Um, you know, and part of our goal for ninth grade beyond just the informational goals, of course, of, you know, how do I log on to plus portals? How do I read my schedule? Um, is to really also make them feel proud and excited about being part of the upper school community. So like every other grade, they're going to be having a virtual orientation on September 1st. Um, theirs is going to be slightly longer and it'll be the first one of the day as well where we'll be covering a lot of information, but also doing a bunch of kind of fun student activity type things as well. Um, we're also going to be um, starting up our buddy program with 12th graders. Um, and we have an exciting kind of pre-orientation program that's still in the works for students to be able to link up with a veteran member of our upper school community who can hopefully bring them under their wing and show them the ropes and be someone that they can ask questions to and be a resource to. Um, so some of those things are already in place. Um, Mr. Hector, um, earlier in the earlier in the virtual learning uh, period, um, was in touch with every ninth grader um, to do a personal check in is also going to be doing that um, as far as our social emotional support goes. Um, so, so those are some of the things that we have in play in terms of our proactive approach. And we're always here, of course, um, to answer any questions or any particular concerns that any of our ninth grade families have. Before you ask the next question, I, I think I, I want to just clarify that if people know plus portals as Redeker, they're the same, they're synonymous. So I hope that I didn't cause additional confusion, um, but it just which, which side of it you really look at. So they, they're the same thing. Next question. Thank you. Um, so we're actually going to be sending out a communication about some new staff members that are joining um, the Berman team. Um, but are there any that you want to highlight any new spaces that have been filled in the upper school staff this um, coming year? Sure, we actually have a number of new faces joining our team. Um, and I, I wish I had my list because sometimes I get nervous and I forget somebody. Um, but I'm going to try my best and, and Ms. Cooper, feel free to jump in if I forget somebody. Um, and don't be offended. Uh, we have um, on our, we have, as we mentioned, our new ASS coordinator, who's a member of our leadership team, Ms. Arielle Kramer. If you could see her in your little box, she's waving at you. Um, if you haven't got to know her yet, I recommend getting to know her. She's wonderful and she's um, an incredible addition to our, to our team. Um, we have on our Judaic Studies faculty, Rabbi Dan Margulies and Rabbi Avi Spodak, who will be joining our team. We have, um, we have a couple of new additions to our English department, Dr. Alexei Gibson and Ms. Brita Kamenitti. We have a new AP Psychology teacher, um, and we have, I'm sorry, um, who else, is, who else is joining our team? Oh, we have, we have a new science teacher, um, a, Natalie Billington. We have, um, I think that's all I can remember now. And I, oh, that's not true. We have an AP computer science teacher, Rich Munns, who's going to be joining us. He's going to be working part of the time in the lower school, part time in the middle school, and joining us for AP computer science. I think I remembered everybody. If I didn't, then I apologize. Thank you. 
Um, can you clarify about um, the PSATs in October? There's limited spacing. Is that um, so the PSATs in October are not offered on Sundays. They're actually offered within the school day. The school gives them. They're different than the SATs. Um, they're not the 10th graders. It's just practice. Um, for the 11th graders, it, ca it, it, it is a little bit a little bit more formal, um, but we offer them in school. There are a couple of testing dates. The College Board, which administers the PSAT as well as the SAT and the APs, have added some additional dates, knowing that there are, there are campuses that can't accommodate everybody on one day. And so we will, we're going to be working and developing a plan on how to test as many people as possible um, within the guidelines that we've been given um, and how to make that happen. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit more about um, tefila times, if they're mandatory, optional? Um, are there going to be different options for different uh, minyanim? Yeah, so thank you. Tefila is, it, is part of our Burman experience. Right? It's what we do. It bookends our day. It's what, how we start our day as a community. We start with tefillah, and it's how we almost end our day as a community. And I'm going to turn over to Ms. Cooper in a second to talk a little bit more. But joining our tefillah, being present, um, and, and, and being a part of, being a part of tefillah is, is critical and important, and we hope that everybody will attend. Um, it's, it's, part of, it's part of our experience, and Ms. Cooper will talk a little bit more about what we're planning. Thank you. Um, so first, I just want to give a little bit of Hakarata Toft Rabbi Moshe Grisberg, who serves as our Rosh Tefillah, um, who I've been working closely with over the summer and as well as our Tefillah faculty. Um, I see Mr. Barons and clapping. Um, we are joined by a team of really passionate educators who really want to make our Tefillah experiences meaningful. Um, and that's a challenge over Zoom. Um, and it's a challenge in a COVID environment, I'm sure, that we face um, in all of our Tefillah spaces. So our Tefillah program is going to, um, it, it is going to be mandatory, which is a shift from what we had um, in terms of our spring program. Um, but there's going to be several options because we want to be responsive to both making tefillah a comfortable, meaningful, and um, viable experience. So you'll be seeing in the coming weeks um, that students will have basically have three options in the virtual, in the complete virtual setting for what they do for tefillah they will have um, the option to receive parental permission to attend a shul or backyard minyan, if that is their choice and that's what their parent signs off on. They'll have the opportunity if they're a student who really prefers to um, daven beyichidu, to daven solo in their home, to have a parental permission to do that as well. Um, and third, what we're really excited about piloting is our kind of tefillah 2.0 um, on Zoom as part of our upper school Berman community. Um, where we will be um, following a similar model um, that we tried to pilot last year in terms of alternative minyanim, but trying to um, harness places in Tfilah where students can take more ownership, um, have more involvement, um, and be active members of the Zoom Tfilah experience. So they'll be working um, with individual Tfilah educators who will be with them in their groups, um, to be um, taking rotations as Shlichet Sibor or as people giving Divrei Torah. Um, we've been thinking through other opportunities to add reflection moments um, into their tefillah experience so that it's not simply the experience of I'm, I'm essentially davening by myself, but I'm in front of everybody else, um, but really trying to integrate some more thoughtful and reflective and meaningful pieces into that Zoom tefillah experience. Um, and with that, we really hope to kind of be um, broadening the opportunities for students to find that meaningful to last space um, wherever it makes sense to them in this virtual context. When we, God willing, return to the building on the weeks where students have class in the building, they will be required to come to Minion in the building as well. And we will have separate to last spaces for each grade to divide them by cohort with the opportunity for students who are virtual to continue with whatever options they had during virtual learning. Thank you. Um, can you just talk a little bit more about the block schedule? I think that this is our, our last question um, and just how uh, the times of the blocks are, are made up to get the same amount of learning um, into that space, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's a question that a lot of people have, right? When we think about the number of minutes that, that happen up for learning and how do we use those minutes? And I wanna, I wanna encourage us to, to think about it a little bit differently. When it comes to a block schedule, it's not just about the minutes of learning, it's about what you do with your minutes of learning. And so when, we, when, 
when the shift to block schedule isn't just, I used to have um, a 37 or a 39 minute period, except on Wednesdays when it was 36 minutes or on fast days when it was 33 minutes and how many do I have the same number of minutes? But rather I'd like to encourage us to think about how the, the, the types of learning, the depth of learning, we're not, we're not necessarily um, overhauling the curriculum. What we're doing is we're saying, these are the goals. This is what we want you to know. This is what we want you to be able to do. This is what we want you to be able to understand and incorporate into your life and into your thinking. And we're going to do it a little bit differently. And so um, with the exception of some of the APs, which I, which I, it's important to put them in a little bit of a different category and we treat them in a different way in terms of the policies that we've created around testing, around, um, around homework, because they're those, those classes actually, um, they, they, are in their, they are in their own category. What happens in the block schedule is that the depth of learning is transformational. Students are able to do things because of the extra time in, in a given class meeting that they were not able to do in a traditional schedule. And so it's not just about the minutes of learning, it's what you do with those minutes that really make the difference in a block schedule life. Um, was that the last, is that our last question for tonight? Um, someone stuck one more in, if you don't mind, just mm -hmm. about what Fridays look like as far as schedule. I'm not sure if it's in reference to short Fridays or just in general. Absolutely. So, um, to their, so long Fridays um, are this, will, will be the same four blocks. Um, we don't have Mincha as a community. On Friday, we encourage people to dive in with their, with their home communities for Mincha and Kabbalah Shabbat. Um, and we don't have the elective on Friday. Um, and that, that is how the, the program has been set up for many, many years. And so the, the rest of the day is the same. On short Fridays, um, we, have, we have to truncate the day a little bit. So we've taken out part, part of the, the student activities block that uh, on Fridays and we've, we've shortened that down a little bit. Um, we've taken out um, a few minutes from each of the class periods in order to make sure that each of the classes will still meet and in order to create equity, the A and the B days alternate. So everyone, everyone will have the same amount of time over the course of two weeks um, when we think about that. All of the details of the schedule, what the, what the bell schedule looks like um, will be in the handbook that we're sending out tomorrow. So if that didn't, if you're a visual person and you didn't want to just hear me talk it through, if you're not, you'll be able to see it, you'll be able to see it in the morning. Um, and uh, I, there are a few, I haven't been monitoring the chat that's been coming to me, so, but I will, I will look through it. Um, and if, if there's something that I didn't answer that you want to reach out to me and speak to me privately, I'm here. Um, I will try my best to, to get back to you as soon as possible, um, it, whether it's over an email or a phone call or, or setting up a Zoom conversation. Um, so I apologize if I didn't get to your question, um, but we're here. We're not going anywhere. This is the beginning of the 2020-2021 school year. We are thrilled to be doing this together with you. We appreciate the trust that you have given us and our team to be able to work with your students for another year. Thank you very, very much. Um, I'm privileged to be a part of this team, to be a part of the school, and I'm grateful for the hour that you spent with me tonight. Thank you.